So, hello Cyberland. Today what we're looking at is the bad bearing support that is built into these Chinese XY tables. This is from the little XY, $89 XY table I'm using. Um, the original bearings were a ball bearing. Those were not working out, so I've gone to these roller bearings. But the problem, actually, this turns nicely now, so I'm... I'm past the original problem, but there's still really an issue that bugs me, and that has to do with the poor interface between the shaft here and the bearing and the amount of support that it does not offer. Per the manual for these bearings, the surface should be, that the, bear, the race, this inner race is sitting on, should be a minimum of 19 millimeters. And that's pretty clear that's not the case. Let me show you what I'm talking about there. This is the other shaft out of that. And if we look closely, we will find that this is about 12 and a half millimeters. So we're what? Six and a half millimeters shy of what is correct. The solution I'm going to is I'm going to put a, of all things, a flange nut on here. And then once that's screwed on with, you know, glue and gunk and maybe a couple of nails and who knows whatever else, so it's not going to come back off, I can then turn the face of the flange nut to make it absolutely perpendicular to the shaft here, which I just do this all on the lathe. So that's the plan. We're going to screw on a flange nut and then turn the face of the flange nut to give us a good bearing support. So what we're doing here is taking this flange nut. It was threaded for 12 millimeters, a 12, 12 millimeter thread, but that's not how I want to mount it to the shaft I'm going to mount it to, which is this shaft right here. Right now this shaft is at 12.5 millimeters here. I've got this turned out to slightly over 12 millimeters here and I'm opening it up more. The shaft, this assembly is going to make a bearing support Right now, the bearing on this is supported on this itty-bitty little ledge, and I want a lot more than that. So once I get these turned to each other, then I'll attach them, uh, probably with a glue. Let's take another quick pass and see where we end up. And we'll keep taking passes, and I'll trim out chunks of this until I get what I want. Okay, where are we at now? Okay, we're at 12.23 or thereabouts. So we're just about there. I doubt at this point that the shaft it may start to slip in. And it still doesn't quite fit. So, another pass or two. Okay, so let's see what we've got now. Two point two three six. We're getting close. So a little bit more. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Okay, that may actually be, be too big. Well, that's actually too big, but that's okay. I'm just going to glue that in place and I'll put a pin across it. Because the actual wiggle is not bad. But I went too far. So that's the turning part of this what this will end up looking like in the final setup is this nut on this way and then the bearings will sit here. The goal here was to provide a much 
bigger bearing surface for the race. Much better support. We've just finished cleaning up this and then turning this to be a close, it's actually ended up being a slip fit. I oopsed a little bit, but what the heck on that. And now we're going to attach it preliminarily with some of the blue thread locker, which will at least get us well stuck. And then later on, I'll do a mechanical connection, probably just a uh, pin through there and a, uh, that should pretty much do it, you know, permanently at that point. But, of course, the whole secret to all of this good stuff is cleanliness. You clean the parts, and then you assemble it. So a little bit of the thread locking compound. And remember which way to put this on, because you want to put it on with the flat surface facing where the bearing is going to be, because that's what this thing's all about. And then I'm going to slide this down. And turn it around because there's a couple areas where it loves it rubs ever so slightly and that should be good the surface here is just slightly above where the bearing race would normally seat and now we shall just let that set up and after that's done i'll chuck it back up and well i'll drill a pin a hole right through there and put in a small pin and then uh Chuck it up on the lathe, and I'll turn this surface right here. That there surface right there to get it absolutely perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And then it'll all go into, of course, the Chinese, cheap Chinese 89 buck XY table that's been a fun little process, if nothing else. And we see what we end up with. It will certainly give much better bearing support than the old thing, which was literally just hanging on the edge of the race okay so with this process we now have a trial fit up my question was is this going to run into things and the answer is of course it is if i tilt the nut up ever so slightly it clears you know if i tilt the shaft here up but that's probably not where it's going to run. So I'm going to have to take this and turn, if nothing else, most of these uh, points of the, of the hex off. And then it should run just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and cross pin this. Then I'm going to turn this and I'll come back to you guys. Okay. So the next step here is to uh, drill through the shaft and the nut and put in a cross pin, which will then allow us to uh, leave this stabilized. It's one of the, going to be one of these little roll pins. So here we go. Noise! And the next step is, of course, putting in the cross pin. I'll be back after I do that. Okay. And now on to the next step. Let's face that one side there. I feel a need for speed. Now we have this surface perpendicular to that. The next step is to change this tool setup around so that I can uh, cut here and maybe down to the back face and where this is currently set, that ain't gonna work. Okay, so now we've done the cut down. The roll pins cut through on both sides, all the way down to the body. So we're much, pretty much getting all the way down on the body. And um, I think that's gonna be pretty good. Okay, this is the final result. Yeah, I know, it ain't pretty, and getting this camera to focus is fun. But, it'll do. And it does give me a much better seating surface than that little lip I had. So let's go ahead and start the reassembly process.
Okay, so we've got this all assembled up in the final form with the adapter here. I ended up taking uh, a one millimeter spacer washer, one of the races, spare races that I'd used out to drop that down a little bit. And um, so now everything sits flush with this. And the effect is, well, there's still a little bit of bind in a couple of places in the screw, but other than that, this turns so much better than what it did before. It's not bound up. It moves smoothly. And this is with the Gibbs tight. Yep, yeah, the Gibbs are tight. So I've just got to do the same thing now for this axis. And we'll be done with the initial get rid of all the primary flaws in the thing so we can get on with the secondary flaws and see exactly then we can once this is installed then i can actually find out if these two axes are perpendicular to each other and whether or not if this is flat down here this is flat up here that's all i've got for you right now i'll bring you back when i've got all this done up because this is just the same as that and we'll go from there I hope everything goes well for you. Again, if you like what I'm doing, give me a like. Perhaps even a subscribe. I'd love that. Thank you very much, my dear viewers. Goodbye.